What's up, everybody? Brett Okamoto from ESPN, joined today by the coach of City Kickboxing, Eugene Behrman, who comes to us live from the luxurious residence inn here in Las Vegas. Eugene, how are you doing? I'm doing great. The residence inn is um, is doing me good, so I'm feeling good. Thank you. Yeah. So you're obviously out here in uh, in Vegas. I think I'm I'm essentially one or two miles down the street from you, but we got to do a uh, we got to do an interview. How has your time in in Vegas been? Obviously for Dan Hooker's fight, and then you're going to be flying to Fight Island when for for Alex Alex's title fight. Yeah, I mean, I could never complain with Vegas uh, in New Zealand at the moment. The weather's like the complete polar opposite. We're in um, freezing temperatures, so it's um, good to get away from that for a little while. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and I've just been, I've basically just spent the last week here waiting for my flight to Abu Dhabi. So I'm just kind of like um, being conservative, self-isolating, if you like. Yeah. I mean, do, yeah. do you leave the room at all? Or are you in there 24 hours a day? Yeah. I mean, look, I've left to get food, but um, I don't know. I'm a little bit more conservative than everybody else. Like in New Zealand, when we had um, community infections, we were stuck in our house. We were mandated by the government to stay in our house. So it kind of freaks me out a little bit to be out in the public mm-hmm. at this at this time. Um, so I've, I've been really conservative. I've tried to stay in my um, self-isolation as much as my as I can. How did yeah. you feel even just about, um, like I say, New Zealand has done a heck of a job with this. They're, they're in a different position than a lot of countries in the world. And so for you to leave New Zealand and fly over here to the United States and just that process. And then, um, you know, being at the fights themselves and seeing the, the precautions that the UFC was taking, what were your overall thoughts on it after you, after you got to live it? Yeah. I mean, we came over here, there was much trepidation coming over here and that was a massive decision. Um, you got to remember in New Zealand, uh, you know, like the news that we get is always, look, you never get the good news. You always get the negative news. So um, we're always getting constantly fed how America's not doing a particularly good job at dealing with this. Mm. And so then with that in light and then to say that we're coming over here is a, is a big thing. It's pretty much national news, actually. I got so I, I got a lot of news, um, <clears throat> got a lot of news stations back in New Zealand um, trying to get a hold of me since we're the only, you know, we, we were the only lunatics that are, stupid yeah. enough to kind of leave the country <laughs> but i'm um, very impressed with the ufc and the way that they've dealt with and the way they're dealing with it i think if they if, if you want to come out of the environment that we are in and into any other environment i think we're coming into the, a very very safe environment so i'm very impressed with the way the ufc is dealing with this and all the protocols they've put in place hmm. yeah well, looking back on uh, on Dan Hooker's fight, obviously not the result that you guys wanted, but uh, you know everybody, myself included, is saying that's in the short list for fight of the year. Um, you know, you were one of only a few people on that apex who got to see it live. What were your uh, what were your takeaways from from Dan's fight with Dustin? Um, yeah, I mean, it's always funny when you attach yourself to. When you attach you when you attach yourself to a fight like that, a fight of the year or a fight of the night, um, it's a funny thing when you're a coach because you don't really want to be attached to that. Um, it, it just means that your fight the fight is more than likely been a grueling, punishing fight. So, um, but that's the kind of kind of uh, consolation prize, right? If if we if if we had to lose, at least we did it in a fashion that um, Dan was able to lift his profile and a lot of people were able to uh, watch that fight. <clears throat> and um, yeah, and, and I guess that's a consolation prize, but you would never trade that for a W. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the fight, um, I can't, you can't take any away from um, American top team and um, Dustin, they did a superb job. They were able to put their plan to better use than ours, and um, yeah, that and and, and and they deserve the victory, and they deserve all the glory that comes with that victory. So I can't complain. At the same time, where you say that uh, as a coach, you don't you don't particularly enjoy those fights. It reminds me of uh, I was talking to Dan last week before the fight, and I was talking about the Felder fight, and uh, that fight has stuck into my mind this year just because. 
both those guys did everything they could. They had, they both had good performances. And at the end of the night, I didn't know who won, you know, and they're standing there and, and uh, it's a split decision. And there's just going to be such a difference in moving forward in terms of what they're going to get, you know, their pay is attached to it. And I said, man, does that, does that make you, um, I mean, how do you feel about that? You know, to know that you can, you can have a great performance and, and you know that like when it's over, you're standing there and you don't know if you're going to win or lose. And the win in this sport is, is the difference between winning and losing just one fight can be, can be so massive. And I was really impressed with his answer. Dan said, well, that's what you expect at, at the very top level. All of us are really, really close. So you're just going to have those types of fights over and over again. I mean, is that, um, I, I, there's a question in here somewhere. Is that how you are too? Or like you're going into these fights and you just know, like you know that the fights are going to be that close, right? Yeah. I mean, dare I say it in this, um, you know, in this environment with all that's going on, but it's almost, um, you almost want to set a different pay scale when you hit the top 10, because when you hit that top 10, when you hit that top echelon of uh, fighters, you know, you're, almost every fight's going to be like that because they're separated by tiny, tiny percentages. Like you you have to, there's going to be a little bit of who can impose the best strategy. It's going to be a little bit of who's got themselves in better shape, but there's going to be a little bit of like, who has the most heart, who has the most grip, who bites down on their mouth guard the hardest. It's all those things. Mm -hmm. um, outside of the top 10, Sometimes you only need one or two of those factors, but normally by the time you get to the top 10, you need to bring in everything you've got and you, every fight you're leaving a big part of you mentally and physically in the cage that you'll never get back because you lose it in the cage. So yeah, when you get to that top 10, it's uh, very difficult. You earn, you earn um, <coughs> every dollar that you get paid and it, that's just the nature of the top 10. So you, could, you can see it. When you look amongst the lightweight division, every fight in that top 10 is, is a grinder, is close, is a tough battle. So credit credit to all those guys and credit to anybody who manages to get themselves in the top 10 of, of, of the UFC. And you did, you did give full credit to Dustin and in his camp, but I, I wanted to ask, what was, was Dan... Was Dan at hundred percent in terms of what we were would anticipate him seeing if, if there was there was no quarantine if there was no COVID? I mean, he did lose the last three rounds of a five round fight. From from your perspective, was his conditioning on point? Was his was he hundred percent Dan Hooker, or was he a little bit of a lesser version just because of the circumstances? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I got to be careful here because uh, I'm definitely a coach that doesn't like to take anything away from the other um, corner, but. Um, we we when you sign the dotted line and put your name on the contract you know for us at least for my team at least that we do that because we think we can win it doesn't matter what the circumstances are it doesn't matter you know it doesn't matter if we've had one week of training no training or eight weeks of training or 12 weeks we only take the fight because we think we have a very good chance of winning mm -hmm. so um so in that regard, there's, there's nothing, you know, we, we, we thought we could win and we, we didn't. We got bested that night and there's nothing to be said about that. Um, look, we, we, New Zealand has been the strictest country in the world, or one of them strictest, if not the strictest. We, at the moment, have zero cases. We have zero cases. Um, there's sporting events going, life is normal in New Zealand. Life is normal. Sporting events, everything is, go, is happening as normal. Um, and the price we had to pay for that is, was a very restrictive. So, um, <clears throat> now that was far from a normal camp. Like, I think it was, I think I only had held pad, I only held my first pad for Dan four weeks out. Before that, he had to do his own training. Um, uh, whatever, you could, whatever you can do in your garage at home. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We 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 assessed everything. We sat down as a team, and we we decided that we we could win this fight, and so we took it. And so it didn't matter the circumstances. If we didn't think we could win the fight, we shouldn't have been in there. So we got no excuses. Everybody's dealing with COVID, and New Zealand has dealt with it uh, the way that we have. America's dealt with it the way that they're doing it. <laughs> and um, yeah, we, we can't take away anything from. Um, Dustin, Mike Brown, and American top team, uh, they did a great job. 
their, their plan and the pace that they kept um, broke us. Yeah. yeah. And so obviously, you know, you're, you're talking about all of these, uh, these differences in the preparations and that, uh, that leads us into uh, what you're flying to Abu Dhabi for, right? Is it a world championship fight with uh, Alex Lukanovsky? Can you tell us, you know, how have those preparations been? What was your strategy coming in and, and how were you able to kind of uh, execute it? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're in the same situation. It's a funny situation for my gym because, well, this is a test. It's a test of my coaches and my athletes and my system. And whether it is a system that can be adapted and suited to a short notice fight, basically, a short notice fight. Um, <clears throat> at the moment, the evidence is pointing to know that we do have to do some tweaking in that regard with our system because we just lost the first fight. Mm -hmm. Alex is going to be under very much the same circumstances as Dan. It's not been a, you know, it's not been a, a, a camp as per we usually know it. Um, Australia, although not as strict as New Zealand, has very restrictive, um, you know, COVID-19 protocols as well. But <clears throat> at the end of the day, <clears throat> we got together as a team and we decided that regardless of the circumstances that we think we can best max again, we think we've got, we've got what it takes and we've got enough time and whatever to, to best max. So, we we it, it's a it's it's difficult but if we if we decide that then we just have to surge ahead and go ahead we're doing a lot of um i'm doing a lot of interaction with um joe lopez and volco um via the power of the modern technology the internet and stuff i review i review all the sparring so i get i get i've been getting sent to me the last four or five weeks all the sparring sessions and then I'm just attaching comments to that. And then I get sent the drills and then it's just back and forth. Like, um, you know, we're a whole ocean away, but we can still, there's still a lot we can do together to kind of adapt to this. And then, yeah, we'll proof in the pudding. It's, 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 we have to prove it, that it works. I, uh, I, I've seen, you know, Alex say in other interviews that, um, you know, he, he's got to go in and fight the guy that he just fought. And not only did he just fight him, he, he was pretty dominant against him. And so, you know, anytime you see that in the sport, it's like, well, what, what can you gain out of this? You know, where does the motivation come from? And what he said is that he, he really wants to prove that it wasn't a fluke, that he'll go in and do it. And this time he's going to finish him. And it, it, I'm always, I always get curious about that because, you know, as his coach, of course, you expect the fighter to say that. And it makes for a great story. It makes sense to me, right? That he's like, well, I beat him, but now I'm going to prove that it was, uh, now I'm going to do it even more decisively. Do you guys actually talk about that to say, you know, well, that's a goal of ours here that we are like, like, what can we gain from this fight other than just defending the title against the man we just took it from that we can finish him this time? I mean, are, are you putting a focus on the finish or is that something that just the media and the fans talk about? No, I think that's something that Alex is using in the media to, you can never, you can never, your plan can never revolve around finishing a fighter like that, 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 that's always a big mistake. Maybe some coaches do it, but you know, when you, when you have a finish that 100%, and I'm sure most coaches are agreeing with me, has to happen organically. So you never look for the finish. You just, it's an opportunity that arises and you take it. But I think there's a little bit, you know, Alex is a very calm, very collective guy, but I think there's, I think there is, there was a lot of rhetoric around. Uh, well, and, and, and I felt it as well. There was a, quite a lot of rhetoric around, that that fight was close hmm. um but it was not <laughs> it was there's nothing in that fight that was close even after max made the necessary adjustments um it was too little too late and even when he made those adjustments alex adapted well alex readjusted himself and and kept the fight kept that lead <laughs> he managed he maintained the lead um, just because Max closed it up a little bit. <laughs> so I think that rhetoric kind of like a little bit gets to Alex. I think he's like, well, how was that? Why, why are people even saying that fight was close? That was a, a dominating win, which, which as a team, we, we think it is. So um, there's a little bit, I'm not going to say a chip on his shoulder, but he has maybe it annoys him a little bit, that rhetoric. And um, 
look, this fight's not going to be. We're not going to be able to. Uh, we're not going to be able to run away with this fight the way we did like that. Uh, I, I mean, I, I'll be honest. I've, I went on record. Uh, I didn't want to fight Max again so soon. Um, as a team, not just Alex, but as a coaching team, we put on. That was one of the most exhausting fights I've ever prepared for. Like, uh, no one, no one was more sick of Max, Max, and looking at Max's face than me. Like, I, 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 if I never look at Max again for a year, I'll be happy. Um, I, I wanted to fight someone else. I wanted to just, I just wanted to freshen things up a little bit. But you know, as it turned out. This is this is the game. This is the business. So you know, we go back into studying Max and trying to find an, another advantage somewhere. Mm. Yeah. Well, last thing before I let you go. Obviously, um, everyone wants an update on Israel Adesanya. What? Uh, first of all, what do you think about the blonde hair? <laughs> um, I, honestly, I, I I would have barely. No, I have only even just even thought about it now that you've brought it up. So I have no opinion on it. Um, Stands yeah, out. It's pretty a pretty drastic change, if you ask me. But yeah, yeah, it is. It is. But that's I, I man. I definitely. Um, I'm definitely the kind of coach that. Um, my, my concerns are when you walk through the doors of my gym. Yeah. <laughs> and. Um, I only ever concern myself with what happens outside of that if I have to, and that's very rarely. So, <laughs> as long as you can have whatever, you can have whatever hair color you want, whatever crazy hair color you want, and when you walk through that door, you know, put your head down and your ass up, and I'm, I'm pretty happy. Yeah, which it does seem like a destiny does. So let's uh, the the fight news. Him and Paulo Costa is that fight happening, and when does it happen? <laughs> um, I, I hope it's happening. I, I don't have anything. I don't have any word on that. Um, the UFC must be still working on a date, but um, you know September we're good to go. We're good to go in September, so um, I'm hoping Mick and um, Dana and, and the likes can you know get us a date in September, and 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 definitely that's the opponent that we we wish that that's the opponent everybody wants to see us fight. That's the opponent that we want to fight. So. Um, just waiting for that paperwork to slide across my desk and then we'll get that done. Yeah. yeah. Um, from your perspective, you think New Zealand or Australia could be a possibility? And if, if the United States continues to be in a position where they can't have fans at, at these events, do you envision a possibility where the UFC could bring an event over there? I think there's been talk about that. Um, I would love I would love that. I think it's perfect. You, it would take a little bit of um, jostling with the government, but the UFC is... You know they're 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 in a good place to do that, but and it, there'd be a, definitely a bit of work there because we've we've got the self isolate we've got the uh, quarantine rule we have to you know we have to quarantine for two weeks. But why wouldn't you have a fight where we can have it would fill it would fill a stadium in this environment like we would fill a, a 60,000 seat stadium and it's the safest country in the world with zero cases. So. If you could get, um, you know, the foreign fighters over there, then yeah, why not? Let's do it, Dana. Foreign fighters and at least one American journalist, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, why not? A bunch of, a bunch of them. <laughs> hey, Eugene, last, last question for you, and thank you so much for the time. Um, you know, I know that your focus is in, uh, on John Jones, um, but, you know, Izzy's focus has at times been on John Jones. And the only thing I wanted to ask you about John is his fights have been closer lately. You know, he's had that that close, close fight with Tiago Santos. And then some people thought that Dominic Reyes beat him in his last fight in February. When you, if you are paying attention and you're watching John Jones, from just from your opinion, why are these fights getting closer with John? Um, <clears throat> look, you, as you get older, you lose, just physically, you lose things physical tributes they decline it's present in all my fighters okay, if you're a good coach if you're an astute coach you can notice it it's present in people like dan israel he, you know i've trained them for years i've trained them from when they were young i notice the differences um yeah and that's what's happening to john and it's not just that he's getting older it's that he's having he's had a lot of fights 
Mm. And there's another, there's also, you can also attribute that to when John was in his youth and just getting into the UFC, he was fighting a different kind of fighter to these young guys, these, the guys that you just mentioned, the Tiago. You know, these guys are young, modern fighters, equipped with more of a modern game, mm. um, equipped with more of a game that John had, you know, six, seven, eight years ago, that he was fighting the Forest. Oh, sorry, not the Forest Griffins, but you know these sort of older school guys, with not the not the sort of modern game that these young guys have. It's it's a it's a it's a you know the level of competition is much different now, and I think that's what John's finding out as well. Mm. Yeah, you think that fight will happen, Israel versus John? You know the way Israel is getting bigger and bigger, and the, and and the way he's eaten nowadays, then it, it has a good chance of happening. I think Israel, um, Israel twenty 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 one, but um, I mean that was <laughs> given that that was before he 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 could predict that well, that is a global disaster. So he, he yes. might be twenty 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 two now, given that um, we've almost had an entire year off. Nice. I don't know. That that's all Israel. <laughs> well, we'll put that one on the back burner for now, but I don't think anybody's gonna be forgetting about it. And uh in the meantime, uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your time at the residence in and, and uh safe flight over to, to Fight Island. Thanks for the time, Eugene. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.